Hi fellow reefers, this is Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video is an update again of the Aquascape. This I promise you is going to be the last video that I'll be doing more modifications and modifications on the Pucani rocks. What happened is, I kind of, you know, if you follow me and you see the previous videos, you'll actually see that on this uh, big rock that, that I have there, it kind of didn't blend with the other rocks, the, the, the rocks that, that you see here. You know, it kind of looked, it, it would like stand out. So what I decided to do, after looking and looking and looking, I decided to actually uh, carve it out a little more. But now the question was, well, how can I do this here? Because these rocks are epoxy together and they're not going anywhere. Matter of fact, to me, uh, you know, for me now to separate them, it would be a mission. I would have to go ahead and uh, use a chisel and a hammer to separate them. So I, I had to do it inside here. So how would, would I go about doing it? Well, you know, considering the glass on the bottom, I couldn't chisel and hammer because I'm risking fracturing the lower glass. So what I came up with that actually worked, uh, I'm going to show you briefly, just an example, how I came up with what you're seeing there. All I did was I got a, a, a regular screwdriver, as you see here, and I just went in. I went in, and uh, as you notice, these rocks have a lot of crevices, a lot of um, opening. So what I would do is, like let's say here, uh, I would put the screwdriver and I would yank it. And then a little piece would come out. And the same thing here and here. And that's what I uh, kept on doing. All around there, so as you notice now, you have all these confederate. It doesn't look like a humongous rock. And I was able to work around it. But it was uh, time consuming. And you really needed a lot of patience, which is what this uh, hobby is all about. Uh, to make things come out, you know, correctly. So that's basically what I actually did. I would uh, go in, little areas, and just yank. And then a little piece would come out. And that's how I ended up with what you're looking at now. Now, um, the next part of this video is going to be to answer the question, uh, is live sand really live? And now what we're going to do is, I'm going to go now uh, and, uh, to that second portion of the video, and I'm going to explain my opinions and my research, what I came up with. So just hold on one second. Okay, and now I want to talk about the second part of this uh, short video when it came to the sand. Uh, is live sand really live? Well, I did some research, asked questions, look around, and to be honest with you, my answer is when you get it, when you uh, purchase it and get it, I would say more than a 50-50 call is not. Now, here's my research and the explanation why I think that this sand uh, is not alive. Uh, when they manufacture, when they package it, yes, they do put uh, bacteria that's dormant, as they say, as they claim and explain. And when you put them in the tank with the salt water, it activates the culture of the bacteria and it's supposed to colonize and then that's when you start to check your parameters and see how the nitrogen cycle evolves. The problem is that uh, when it comes to these salts that they, as, as you notice this one, it, uh, this is what, what I use the, the carrot seed, aragonite, the Fiji pink live. As, as, as you notice they all come with a, uh, a water inside. Now what happens is that you really don't know when they, I mean, what I'm trying to say is, I'm not saying that it's false advertisement, in no way I'm saying that. Yes, when they put in these bags, they prepared it and all that, it was, uh, the bacteria was cultured, it was live, and on and on and on. But here's, here's my concern. When they ship it out to the LFS or to the warehouses or, or all these online stores that you have out there, you don't know where they have them. These uh, bags might be in a pallet uh, where there's uh, a lot of heat that uh, these bags are getting. They might be in another area in a warehouse or a LFS that uh, it's very, very cold. And then uh, if you have that differ uh, differential in temperatures, <coughs> excuse me, 
the bacteria will eventually die. So when you get it uh, to your home, whichever, online, LFS, etc., etc., you don't know how this uh, um, sand was stored. Now, I'm not referring to, like, let's say, the pet shop. I'm referring prior to where they uh, purchase it to the wholesalers. You don't know where they had them. So there's a high probability that although, yes, it was live sand when they packaged it and all that, but there's, you know, there's a high probability that when you get it here, either the sand is no longer live, the, the culture bacteria is no longer live, or if it is, barely. That's why, that, uh, like I say on my previous videos, I use the old school combined with the new school. The old school, uh, back in Miami, I would always use live sand, and I would use live rocks. And still, even that, I would still uh, put uh, beneficial bacteria, <coughs> excuse me, I, I would put bacteria into the water, and I would start to check my parameters to see how the nitrogen cycle was, was running, was going. I would do that no matter what. Now, in lieu of that I'm using uh, dry rocks even more. I did this part of this video and there's a reason why. There's two followers that um, followed uh, the video that, that, that I did adding sand and one of them got huff and puff, got all upset. Uh, that why would I wash the uh, sand where the sand, quote unquote, is live and I just killed all the bacteria. Then I had another follower that uh, said, that said, why didn't I buy uh, non live sand? I would save money and I could wash it and put it in the tank. Well, this part of this video is to answer those two followers that had that concern and my uh, background that I've been doing this like for many, many years, more than 25 years or more, and what I have found as I go along, and what I read and I research. These sands, although it says life, and on the back, if I was to flip it, this bag, it, it, it says uh, good until December of 2018. Fine, fantastic, and all that, but I still would be hesitant to call this, now that I have it in my possession, life. You know, so that's one of the reasons that I went ahead and I did the video of adding sand where I went ahead in the kitchen and I uh, washed it and washed it to avoid the dust that these sands bring, that that's why your water gets cloudy. Now, if you were to use the Ocean Direct, uh, that sand is actually washed before it's bombarded with the cultured bacteria. So you won't get that amount of cloudiness. But even though... Ocean Direct by Carib C is the one that I used on, on my nano tank, and trust me, I I went ahead. I, I got a, I think it was a, a ten pound bag. I put it in the tank, and I put the water, and the water still got cloudy, and I had to wait like two or three days until it, it cleared. So that's my answer. Eddie Nasco, Eddie's Reef Aquaria, me, me alone. Uh, the disclaimer that I'm using in reference to the answer to that question. Is life sand really alive? So I thought I'd close this video with this part that I uh, wanted to stress on uh, clearing up in reference to the video that I did adding sand because like i uh, reiterate, uh, there was some concern with two of the followers that why did I do that when the sand was live? Uh, more than 50% is, is not, not live. This, this bag is the bag that I got left, left over. It hasn't even been opened. And no matter if I was to do another build and I would put this in, I still would see the water, you know. So that being said, that's basically it. What I wanted to touch on this video and uh, recapping in reference to the uh, aquascape. That's it. I'm happy, content. I'm not going to do no more uh, aquascaping on this tank. My next videos will be like uh, informative videos on what I'm going to use. Uh, when I cycle the uh, tank, uh, what bacteria, cultures I'm going to use, and how I actually cycle a tank. Uh, I might do it different than the, the new ways. I'm, uh, like I said before, I mix the old school with the new school. So that's the next video that will be coming up. Uh, 
like I say again, I'll be uh, posting um, either on Instagram and here what products I'm going to use and then of course a video on how I'm going to cycle this actual tank. So that being said, uh, like I always say, I do want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and informative and uh, educational. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. And you're welcome to subscribe to my channel. And like I say on all of the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.